Plymouth Fargo, my very own team, the Janners, a team that has fantastic pasties, Pilgrim Pete, and lastly, a fantastic fan base. However, they have lost their manager, Stephen Schumacher. The man that won them League One and gone back into the Championship has left Argyle to join Stoke City. However, with Ian Foss coming in as manager, we are going to help him real build Argyle with the new signs he has brought in as well. It's the biggest prize of them all, the Champions League. So here we have it then, my beloved Plymouth Argyle. It's about bloody time I did a rebuild of my own very own club right here. To win the biggest prize is the Champions League. That's what we want to go for. The Premier League, the FA Cup, the whole shebang. But we got to get out of Championship first. We've got to help the man right there as myself as the assistant manager for Ian Foster right there. Let's go check out the team. Now, Plymouth Fargo have got actually a couple of decent players, especially their youth academy. It's, it's up there. It's a very good team. as We've got Alan Forshaw coming in from Norwich on loan. As you can see as well, some of the players I have just transferred fully on because unfortunately this is on an old save and EA have not updated. So we've just made him a permanent signing for the club. Just like as well, if I could just quickly find him whilst scrolling down, we have also got Alfie Devine here. We have just actually just signed him not actually gone on the loan because like i said it is on an old save so we've just made one pound just to help us out a little bit getting out as a championship or just getting higher in the championship for next season looking at some key players though that we have got bally mumbo who was absolutely phenomenal one of the players of the season i believe in league when we're still waiting for him to hit a little bit for him in the championship we all know he's got it in the locker and he can play that whole left hand side and then we got the main threat in the team in my eyes in morgan whitaker looked at by fulham brentford aston villa i do believe around the 20 odd million mark i don't know if he will actually go but he is our best player by our country money he loves to cut in and swing a goal from outside the box unfortunately with our new signings coming in we've made with permanent like darko jamie right here and also alfie devine we've got a lot of coverage in the middle that we probably need to get rid of so let's have a look actually in the team management here we've got lewis warrington which unfortunately loaned in from everton i just don't really see him fitting the team and when he has played for argo not gonna be that guy but he's been very bad indeed I know that Foster believes I'd like to play if I can quickly find it right now. I think his preferred position was the 3-4-2-1, but it's very attackive. So I feel like I'm going to play the 3-5-2 and not go for the extra little bit of attack going forward. So this is the team that I'm going to go for this season in season nice. one that was helping out Ian Foster throughout the season. As you see, Morgan Waker is now pretty much our captain in real life when the ban himself, Edwards, is not playing. So this is the team we're going for. And as you can see, there's one position that we have need to get a bit of cover for, and that is the striker row. However, I do not want Wayne as one starting striker. I just don't think he's very clinical enough, so I feel like he'd be more of a substitution striker. So I feel like the only sign we're going to make this season is in for the striker row, which is why we're going to invest in the Youth Academy Scouts to get someone in the ST row. So let's hire a brand new scout here. Ideally, I wanted the judgment to be five star, but we can do it with the experience as well. So why not? Let's get it in right there. Because as you can see in the top right corner just then, we pretty much only got about four million to play with. And of course, we want to go up top here. So I'm going to go six months here. Go for the ST row. Let's try and find it right here. If we can bloody find it, I don't think it will. So we'll just go attack and minded and then position S T. And hopefully by me doing that, we can find an excellent striker like Ryan Hardy to help him score some goals for Plymouth Fargo in season one for Plymouth Fargo. So as you know, a couple of days have gone by. As you can see, we're on the 5th of August and it looks like we have simulated past one game and I think we actually got the win against Watford. So let's have a little quick look here on the calendar. We've got a couple of games and we have, we've got the 3-2 win against Watford. So I must be doing something bloody right because Plymouth Fargo in real life are still struggling to find their first away win. And with me and assistant manager Ian Foster, it looks like it's going well. However, we have got some absolutely horrible news. I've just seen it. Ryan Hardy is injured, but it gets even worse, ladies and gentlemen. He is injured for seven months. Listen up, everybody. I have some news. We are screwed. However, our youth academy came back, and it looks like we're going to find two strikers now, but we have potentially got one in with Jackson Dixon. Yes, it says right wing to Cam. However, if I go into the development plan and change it to a striker in two weeks, hopefully he will jump up in massively in overall, and he might have to come to Steam straight away to go up top. Throughout the simulation as well, we have made some crucial decisions on selling some players. And here we go. We have got two in Callum Burn and also a Butcher. I just can't really see any room for them to be in this team anymore. So that is why I go around. I think we want to get rid of Butcher, but considering we have got Gnabi coming in as well, he is a decent player and we have not got any much room for Butcher. So with Ryan Hardy injured, it means we are forced to sign a new striker. So I'd like to welcome to the team for 1.1 million in Damien Downs, 19-year-old sensation, the overall of 62 from FC Cologne in Germany. We need a tall striker for Plymouth Fargo. With Cosgrove obviously leaving us, 
we need someone new. So he's six foot four. He's rapid. And he is number 13 for Plymouth Fargo over Ryan High position whilst he's out for seven months. Welcome, Damien Downs. So a couple of days have simulated past because we want to see what the overall of this youth academy player will get when we change his position. So let's see, will he be an impact in the first team? And he has, he's gone to 61 overall at the age of 16. He is 100% going to be the starting striker with our new signing, Damien Downs. Looks like Alfie Devine has got a red card, so we'll see you later, Wayne. He is leaving the team for Dickerson's here we drop to the res actually to the substitution for rotation oh we're right there because let's be honest right you're very slow in real life my man I don't really rate you too much I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to say it it is the rebuild of me and Ian Foster so the question is now how we get over the league so far before we let our objectives and simulate to the end of the season and I'll tell you what we're still undefeated not too shabby indeed we've played four games drew two and actually won two so a decent start let's have a look as well as we've been burning the Cubs well on 3 0 on Penny, which is why I did we go to the next round there. We beat Leicester 2 1 on the, the 12th. Happy days of a draw against Middlesbrough and a draw against Bristol City with Coral Street and Middlesbrough and also Sunderland right there. So, very interesting indeed to see how we go into the remaining of the season. However, it's time to look at our objectives from Big Simon in the board of directors. So, let's have a look. Youth development here sign at least within three players under 20 and sign two players in the youth academy signed to the defense position. This is the high priority right here, so we might need to switch it up when we get to it very soon. A brand exposure sign one crucial player to sign to the midfield forward position. Bit strange, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I feel like I have done that with Damien Downs with 1.1 mil, but also they're expecting someone a little bit higher right there. Financially, sell two players will be on the side, two crucial players. Not too bad, all right, okay, we can potentially do that. Domestic slip. This is what's more interesting. I think every Plymouth Fargo fan that will watch this video will probably say, in real life, we just need to avoid relegation and stay in the championship. They actually wanted to finish mid-table and round around a 16th stage on the FA Cup. Very hard right there. And of course, no continental success right there. So a fair ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're probably going to simulate to the end of the season now. Hopefully, we won't get sacked with Ian Foster. And let's see if Plymouth Fargo can survive the championship. So here we are in near the end of the season with Plymouth Argo. We have simulated the whole season. We won 3-0 against Rotherham, 2 against Swansea. That's quite good right there. And looks like we have got Preston in our last game against one of our former former managers in Ryan Lowe. Looking like in the top right corner, we've got a lot of stuff to actually go over here. Looks like they've got the loan expiries and everything to deal with with Bundu Hazards. Not looking good there. But we have come ninth in the league, which is actually pretty good. Well, actually, not too sure yet. Hold your horses, because if we don't beat Preston, we'll get a draw. Could be something wild there. Let's say Wick is not playing, which is very strange. And we actually do get the win with Ryan Hardy coming back for his injury and Bally Mumba, which is very nice to see. Now let's see where we actually have officially finished in the league and then assess the actual cup runs. I don't expect any cup runs to actually win. And we have actually have finished ninth, which I think is very good. A very good season indeed. We're literally about three places off from the playoffs, which to be fair for Argo, is pretty good for Ian Foster. FA Cup run now. Arsenal versus Everton, bit of a strange one there. The question is, where did we come Let's have a look. We've just got to try and bloody find us now. Where the hell are we? And there we are. Birmingham knocked us out on penalties, which is very annoying indeed. How are we going with the Gabero Cup, though? It looks like Newcastle beat Manchester City on penalties. Fair play to them right there. How did we get on, though? Let's have a look. We beat Liverpool 5-3 in round four. All right, they must have had a weaker team out right there. And we actually did get knocked out by Manchester City, which is expected at the A. But what an away day for the fans. However, before I reveal who the outstanding players of this season, we're going to check our objectives here and have a look at seeing here to sign two players in the youth academy to sign to the defender position, which we technically haven't signed them yet. I will quickly show you now. Before we simulated, we did send out a scout to the defender division to see if we could find it. And this is who we've got here. So we're going to bring all three, well, pretty much all four of these in, pretty much, except Rodrari Roberts right here because he's only 15 years old. So what we're going to do, we can bring every single one of these in. See if we can pay a bit of money. Except from this Ellis Knights here. Could be a Bally Mummer replacement here. 85 to 94 potential at the age of 17. He has definitely got something with him there. And also this Archie Evans. He will come into the team as well. So this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Obviously, Ryan Hardy did return and back from injury after his seven months injury. So very wild indeed. Let's say Cooper there. Only getting four clean sheets, which just isn't really good for the championship. Expected to do a little bit better there. But it looks like once again, Morgan Worker is our outstanding player. With also Jaxie Dixon going up by a plus five. Ben Wade actually getting pretty much the same goes as our new zone and Damien Down, which is very interesting considering we are pretty much starting Damien Downs a little bit more. But it looks like Ben Wade has been playing a little bit more games. Bally Mumba has really stepped up in the championship this season, getting 11 goals in the left mid spot is pretty good. And considering Ryan Hardy just came back from injury, seven goals out of nine is very impressive indeed. But one player I expected to do a little bit better in the camera was Alfie Devane. So maybe in the next season, we need to find a bit of a rotational camp or perhaps let's change Mustafi Bundu into more of a camera. So he gets a bit more game time for the team. It looks like Ashley Phillips will be returning back to 
swear spares here, which is a bit of a shame. I would like to bring him in. Maybe we can work something out in season two. But for now, this team did do too bad for finishing where they are in the league. I'm happy with the season we've had. Hopefully in the next season we can crop the table. And who knows, maybe get some more youngsters and maybe push for the playoffs. So here we are in season two has arrived. But unfortunately, we start off with a little bit of bad news. Obviously, some players was not rotated throughout the last season. So unfortunately, we are going to be losing a couple of players for season two. Starting off with Callum Roy, as you can see, we cannot block out. And also very annoying in Diodago with Jamie Ganabi. That would be a bloody pronounce it right there. He wants to leave as well. Which to be fair, considering in real life we've only loaned about for one season, I do believe it makes sense. Which means we are just going to get a bit of hefty bit of wedge for him right there. Which leads on to my next topic. As you can see, Evans leaves on loan. Roberts leaves on loan. And Morris leaves on loan there. So a couple of players who are going to go out on loan due from the Youth Academy. We brought him in. So we're going on out there. And lastly, we got Isaac there, the striker. I think he's like 51 overall. overall. Our backup, backup, backup striker is there to go to Karma FF. However, with our only budget being around the 3 million mark, and the reason behind that is, is because we have hired out one more scout and finally got a five-star judgment scout in Pablo Evlela right there. So what we want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is send both of these out for three months. And then in three months' time, we will simulate for them days and see what they have brought back for Plymouth Argo. But for now, we are just going to set out now and cover some more things before we simulate to them days. So I want to find another striker, and I feel like we need to find a certain CDM because obviously Darko Gnabi and Forshaw, well, one of them has left and one of them is getting quite there with age. So we need someone in that bracket. And I feel like we don't want to go through here. Where do I want to send out for a DM? I feel like Italian have got some bit naughty DMs in real life. So I feel like we want to do that. What do we want to do with a physically strong one? And we'll go for the DM right there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the team as well. We're just going to quickly show you and assess it a little bit more right now. So you can see Dickerson, Stone T and Bundu, but we've got Downs here as well with our new time. one of the best players from last season. With Ryan Hardy coming back at and Devine. Hopefully Alfie Devine they could actually have a better season in this one because he was a bit slack in last season. And also, like I said, I still want to get on the verge of selling Ben Wayne. So with all some of these players potentially leaving the club, we do want to get our budget a little bit higher so we could bring in a couple of players. Now, I feel like I can prove this team for season two. Now, before we simulate a couple of days to see where them three months gone, we're going to actually finally set up a tactical vision and actually hire out some coaches as well. Because we didn't do that in season one just due to the fact of the budget. But to be fair, I don't think it really suits that too much. And like I said, with some of the players doing the team, it will definitely go up in general. Now, looking at the team here in this 3-5-2, we can see the two outstanding players in Bally Mumba and Morgan Whitaker. For some me, I'm going to go basic. I'm going to go for the wing play. They're the two that's going to cause the most havoc playing the boards into Alvy Divine and also Downs and also Hardy. So I feel like we're going to go for the wing play right there and hire out some coaches to make the team even better for season two. And by me doing this, it only leaves us one last thing to do. And that's having like a big storm in the board of directors to see what Plymouth Fargo and Ian Foster and myself have got to do for this season. So let's have a look at the youth development. As of course, we've got a good youth academy. We said that in season one. So we want to keep developing this. Hence why we've got the fire star scout on the judgment. Bryce Bridge get 10 games without defeat this season. Pretty sure we can do it. It's a low priority anyway. Domestic success. I mean, this is going to be the bit of the push one here. We got close last time finishing ninth last season. And we didn't do too bad in the FA Cup and the Cabrera Cup as well. But fight for mode promotion. I feel like with some of the players naturally growing up now being a young team as well, we could definitely go for this. Maybe you never know. In the first season, we see Plymouth Fargo in the Premier League if we get past the playoffs. Or you never know. Get all max. Or you never know. Win the actual league. And also Continental, as we all know, we haven't bloody got that because we're in the championship and all that's left to do now is wait for these youth scouts to come back and we'll see what they have found in a couple of months time so let's show as you can see we have simulated all the way to january i was going to do three months while i went oh screw it let's go all the way to january and as you can see we've actually got a manager's award there let's say miller's departed wayne's departed so a lot of people have been sold let's have a look who has been left at plymouth argo first shall we transfer history so here we go we've got Mikhail Miller he wanted to leave so we wanted it so we well we pretty much let him leave in the end to Atalanta United right there big shame actually because he's doing really well in real life Ben Wayne like I said wasn't a massive fan but for 2.1 million to Ghent we can't really reject that right there considering he's not really the best in real life he had a good season on the career mode but in the, in the real life a mm, bit hit and miss in my opinion Connor Hazard this one was a big shock I hope he would stayed but it's gone to Kronos, say there. I don't know what division. Maybe Syria B right there anymore. Gee, how many people we lost? Obviously, Gnabi we have lost. And Callum Rose. So that is a total of five players that have lost at Plymouth Argo. However, our budget should have gone up to a lovely 7 million. And I've got the perfect replacements. 
to bring in. And the first signing, ladies and gentlemen, goes to an individual called Aiden Stone in goalkeeper for Notts County. We only paid a mil for him, and he's doing really well in real life. He's decent indeed. A new rotation with accepted on four years. So welcome, Aiden Stone. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we have to bring him back. He's gone to Spurs. We bought him back for two million in Ashley Phillips, the brand new centre back who Argos just brought in from loan in real life. But we made it a reality today. He didn't do too well for us in the first season in this career. We didn't get a lot of game time, but this one he's got up to 66. And we got him on a five year deal on a rotational contract. So he's not going to be moaning on the bench. So welcome back, Ashley Phillips. So with Phillips and Stones getting added to the team, we pretty much need another backup centre mid slash deal because we only got Howen, Forshaw and Rando. However, ladies and gentlemen, throughout the three months, remember what I said, we had the academy growing. We found players, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to introduce you to some right now. Starting off with Rodri Roberts. He's not really going to hit the form, is he? So unfortunately, we're going to have to let this kid go. We have got this Tomasho Moretti here, the 86 and 92. He's not too bad. But considering he's only out the overall 54 and he's dropped down a potential, we're going to let him go. We're going to let him go for now. However, though, we have got this Tomasso Poly, though. And I know what you're saying, the 80 to 90, but he's 65 overall and at the championship level. That ain't too bad. So I'm going to promote him to the team and he could make a good impact substitutional role in Plymouth Fargo. Same with Diego Corina, though. At the same time, I think he's got something about him. But I feel like I'm probably going to try and loan this guy out. So he's going to go into the team. And then lastly, we've got these three individual. We've got Diago da Costa here. He looks absolutely brilliant. The big Carlos man in the Brazilian DM. We sent the one out there, so we've got one right there. Baited the silver though. This guy's got something a little bit about him. I feel like we're going to try and learn him out. However, with his development plan, I feel like he's more of a cam, as you can see, with his dribbling. So I'm going to actually do this. Wait until the end of the window and see if we can learn him out there. And Noah Dixon, unfortunately, you're not going to make it, my son. So we're going to release him as well. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the end of January. And as you can see, the clock is going down. The deadline day is done. We've made no more future signings. However, there have been some loan outs. So and I'm going to show you right now with some of the Youth Academy right here. So let's go to our transfer history. And let's assess it right there. So we've got De Costa here going to Absa Club. He has gone there on loan for one year. And also Colina gone to Minnesota United in the United States. They're the only Youth Academy players gone. However, we have got one here. We've changed his position around. Oh, bloody wrong thing right there. We don't want to do that one again. The Youth Academy. We have changed him to a DM into a cam, and he has gone up massively. With an 81 to 94 in Victor to Silva. So he will be coming to the team with a rotational with Alfie Devine. So he does need someone in that position. So we're going to get him in right here. And this is the team, ladies and gentlemen, to go in to the season. Very good team. Very good team indeed. I mean, Bundu needs to be about that. I don't know why he's sad. He looks like he's starting the game. Same with Mumba. I don't know why that's been switched around, but it is what it is. Hard is on the bench with Downs and Dickerson. These are the two ones we want to be looking at the most because they're the youngest players. And I'll see Alfie Devine. Hopefully, he can still have an outstanding season. Not too bad in the Lego, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we are in third. Not too shabby indeed. Can Plymouth Fargo go all the way though in season two? And who knows, gain automatics or even win the league. So it's during near the end of the season now. It looks like we have just beaten Sheffield right there. I want to approach Rowers in League 1. We beat Middlesbrough as well away. And we have got Blackburn in our last game. We're still in the Green Minority in the top of the phone with Ian Shaw and myself as assistant manager. We're where we finished in the league. I like it. And we have come third. We're literally, if we beat Blackburn, we're so close to all max. But it will be the playoffs for Plymouth Fargo. Legazello and Rando injured as well. Let's just do this on the quick sim. We're going to win our last game. And we've actually lost our last game, so it won't have mattered regardless. Very annoying though, but we have got the playoffs. That is it right there. And let's say we have got West Brom first. As you can see, Wolves have won the EFL Championship. But let's have a look at the West Brom game and see if we can get to the final at Wembley. So here we have it then. Semi-final time against West Brom. The first leg, let's say Rando is injured, but we're just going to do it to the automatic one right there. Can we get the leg and the weight? And it's a two-all. So there is a chance. We've got the second leg at home park and we're a fortress at home park. Are we going to get to another Wembley final where we don't have a really good track record? I mean, last time was there. We lost 4-0 to Bolton, so uh, yeah, not very good at all. But we've got to pass West Brom first. Let's have a look. Two on aggregate. Can we do it at home here? Or are we going to lose? And we lost, unfortunately. 2-0. This is bullshit. On the full time whistle. 4 to on aggregate. So it looks like Plymouth Fargo will be staying in the championship for another season. But I'm not massively worried. 
to be honest because it just gives us more time to grow as a team and we have pretty much ticked our objective from the board we fought for promotion we fought it and we just didn't come out on top as you can see we fight for promotion round of 16 we also didn't get right there because it's got a cross right there but we did get youth development so the board are happy and i'm actually quite happy as well i mean looking at the standings here if we have a look at our league table we came third i mean we came higher than the likes of leicester burnley and west brom and southampton so it was very close very close indeed we was only literally a couple of points off from automatic so i think next season we go for the league i reckon we could generally go for the league with the team we have got Let's go check out the team right now. We've got a lot of injuries within the team, which is a bit annoying. Look at, look at Bally, Mumbler and Morgan Wicker. Absolute units. I'd be surprised if they want to stay for next season. But let's have a look at the outstanding players. Morgan Wicker, of course, is our best player. Dickinson looks like he's had a decent half season right there against 16. So with Avi Devine and also Downs. And let's say Victor De Silva here is actually getting a couple of goals as well over the rotation with Alfie Devine. So very good indeed. Bally Mumble with 11 assists. It's nice to see. What I'm intrigued to see though is how is the youth academy players getting on. Let's have a look. Carlos Descostas only going by plus one. Diego Correa by plus two. Alfie Yavas by plus four. Anyone else? Ethan Morris. Not too shabby indeed. So not too bad with the team. But we expect a little bit more for the next season. But overall, not too bad at all. So here we have it then. Season three has arrived. And with Plymouth Fogel just barely missing out on automatics. And then losing in the semi-finals to get into Wembley to have a chance to get promoted we find ourselves still in the championship and I'm gonna say it I think we have definitely got the squad to go on to potentially win the actual championships and get ourselves for the first time ever in Plymouth Argo history to the Premier League let's see if Big Simon and the Bulls agree as well with the objectives Yo, development is a crucial one this one sign two players in the youth academy sign the fame position we could definitely do that sign at least three players younger than 20 which is absolutely fine we all know the brain of there and then brand exposure sign two players of the same national at the same club Ooh, we could potentially do that financial absolutely fine domestic success gain automatic promotion and reach the round of 16 in the FA Cup and continent of course late the first season in a row like I always mentioned we haven't got because we're in the championship they have time to technically agree to gain all max, but I want to do one step better that and come first in the league and win the championship. However, because we're in our first season, I don't really want to massively jump into the Youth Academy too much this season because I don't think we're getting massively luck on it. And also as well, I feel like we need to step up again and sign some actual high quality players. But however, we will set some out here. We're going to set it in England and get some English centre-backs right here. So we want to try and get maybe... Yeah, let's do a friend of a centre-back. Why not? And we're saying we do with this Estonia right here let's have a look here see what the youth scout can do i'll tell you what let's go to the german league they've uh, had some good well, german center backs over the years like back in bauer that's just one to name off the top of my head uh, who was my being boy tang absolute units back in the heydays but now we need one for this crew mode here today i probably there's probably absolutely loads of them but on the top of my head right now ladies and gentlemen i cannot think of either so we're just going to send them for three months see what they bring back in three months time however with the budget this season being an absolute whopping 30 million from Simon, he has absolutely thrilled the clash at Ian Foster and myself. Is surely going to get some good players for the team. However, with us getting rid of Ellison Knight, we're going to actually keep Tyreek right. And I did say I wanted to get rid of him, but we're just going to keep him. He's actually just sitting as a rotational. And to be fair, he is quite young, the Irishman. And we need someone there to just give it the cut for one of our best players in Mumba. So that is why he is the cracker. However, though, it's going to say goodbye to Dan Scott. I'm actually going to get rid of him in Season 3. And the only reason behind that is I'll show you now. We have got a lot of centre-backs here. And considering he's only 30 years old, 71 overall, we want to get the market value as much as possible before he gets a bit older in age. And like I said, we've got the likes of Phillips here. Ethan Morris as well, show great potential. Carlos De Costa, as we've mentioned. We've got a lot of variety in the centre-backs row. So unfortunately, he will be going to a different team. The rest of the team, though, I'm actually pretty satisfied. I don't think we need to get anyone in the attack. To be honest, but the what I would say the main positions we need to upgrade is really the DM, and I would say probably a rotational over Randall or an actual first time over Randall. Yes, we know Randall. We all know Plymouth lads. He is one of our very own, but we got to look for the future in terms of. I'm not saying we get rid of him. He'll still be a very important part of the team, but we need something a little bit, a little bit better than him to maybe get into the Premier League. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome our first signing in, Lewis Miley from Newcastle. So 19 years old at the overall of 74. To be honest, he's a very good player in real life. He's only just recently got really more game time for Newcastle. And once we have seen him, he's actually really good. And considering we want to go for the Premiership, why not go a little bit of a downgrade, but go to a team that's got a lot of promise in the near future in Plymouth Argo. 
going to be a bit of a rotation with Randall, but it's a big competition at midfield now. So it all depends who's going to be the better player. But this man is the new starting team. He's up to Randall to fight for this position back. Welcome to the team. And last, ladies and gentlemen, we said we needed DM, so we went back to the Premier League in Aston Villa and Archie Gray. 19 years old, they over of 73. The new, brand new DM coming into the team. Like I said, it's no more messing around now with Ian Foster and I. We want to go for the, well, we want to get promoted to the Premier League and we want to win the championship. So we've got two youth English scouts, two promising English scouts in Archie Gray and Lewis Miles. So welcome to the team that's our last side in let's go check out the team so let's jump this is the team for the season three and my god it's absolutely brutal with morris going in now the youth academy finally going in two youth academy players now going into the team in dickerson and morris molly and gray in the new center mid and dm positions whitaker mumba on the wings the producer davina in the camera downs and dickerson up top gives and plagues Zayla cooper and the substitution ryan holly to silver right randall Houghton, phillips and stone I will offer Randall a new contract on a rotational, but I don't think he'll accept it. But I think, to be honest, he won't move throughout the season because, well, he's pretty much the same nearly overall as these two as well. So it should be a nice little partnership right there. And Howard just to sit there and do a bit of rotation with Polly as well. With Evans and Costa still going out on loan with Knight to be sold as well. As you can see, that we're talking about Knight. Our budget is about half a million. So when Knight goes... Hopefully, we will get that budget. A nice little wedge to just be safe for the remainder of the season with contracts, etc. However, they've gone to the transfer history of our team. Now, Dan Scott has gone to South Panto and Bundu has gone to Argotigos Juniors, believe there, in the Argentine League. So, two big losses there. I would like Bundu to stay. But if he wasn't satisfied, we've just got to let him have his way and let him go. All we got to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much I'll do it off camera to hire some more coaches just to help this team a little bit more. And all I'll do, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you guys in three months' time to see if we can get any more centre-backs or defence to tick off that objective. And then after that, we'll simulate to the end of the season. So here we have, ladies and gentlemen, three months have gone by and we've got our last scout report right here. I'm very intrigued to see how the team has got on as well as the, we have just simulated three months. So here we go, the youth scout report. Here is the three individual here. But before we get onto them more thoroughly, let's have a look if we've brought any more with the last one here so nothing really here maybe henry moss i mean 800k value i mean we'll definitely bring him and see what his crack is there leave sean fox out of it right there have we got any more let's have a look at the german division anyone here and unfortunately not so we're just going to leave it right there and absent right there player chat though tomas good poly under primary pressure you play me not yada 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 i think well i'll just apologize we'll, uh, we'll have to involve them more into the team hopefully the system the system managers right the simulation is playing right there but however as you can see, Dan Scar, one of our former players, is not very happy over there. They need to improve on him right there. But let's have a look at our Youth Academy right here and see who we have for. Bobby Anderson here, dropped down in overall potential, so we're definitely going to get rid of him. He is a goner. Henry Moss here, not too bad indeed. I think I'm just going to leave him in and see what he looks like. An absolute brick shit out, to be honest, looking at his picture there. Harvey Johnson, though, he looks like someone who could potentially go up to be an absolute baller in the near future. I believe he had a 1.8 million market value when we brought him in. So hopefully he can grow into something there. And Aaron Barnett here as well. Five star skills we've had. Can he play more of an attacking position? Don't think he is. He's definitely the DM row right there. So we're just going to keep them in right there. I might promote Harvey Johnson. I might actually, no, I'll probably just leave him in now and see how they get on. Last thing to do is just get one on here. So let's get the 10 weeks on right there because it's the shortest one. And let's go check out the external performers of the team so far. So here we are. Let's see if anyone has grown at all. So let's say Ballymum and Morgan are finally up to the eight overalls. Finally, they have achieved it. But let's have a look at the statistics here. Ballymum are not doing too well. Morgan, and what a surprise. He is doing bits as per usual. But also Damien Downs finally coming to zone here. Seven goals in nine appearances. Dixon needs to be a little bit better. And the same with Alfie Devine. He needs to just pick up a little bit of a tad there and get more assists within the team. Not too shabby though. How are we doing in the league table? Well, let's have a look. We are second. And we actually have got Cardiff in next at home park. Can we get this win here? Let's have a little quick gand before we simulate to the end season. As you can see, a lot of tired legs. Do we play with the second team? I think it's got more energy. So let's do that right there. And unfortunately, we lost with Divine getting the consolation go at home park in the 81st minute. So hopefully, with that result there, it will not continue on. The last thing we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is actually look who we actually have got rid of before we see right there so let's go to transfer history and just recap right here so we have sold Naya to Liguenes, the second division Spanish team and Costa has gone on to Fabricao right there for one year 
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully we do not continue on with them defeats like we just saw against Cardiff there. Maybe, just maybe, we can get the automatics and for me, win the league. So here we are at the end of the season. Look like we're going on a bit of a winning spree. We've just beat Birmingham 3-2 away. Can we beat Norwich? Be them 3-1. We're absolutely battering, but it's in the Orange Barari in the top left-hand corner with our last game at Sunderland away. The question is, has my hunch come true at the start of the season? Have we gone on to win the league? Let's reveal it right now. And I can't believe it. We have done it. We have been the likes of Leicester City, Sheffield, Stoke, Middlesbrough. I cannot believe it right there. Look at Southampton coming in eighth as well. Really poor season from him. Same with Watford as well. I expect him to be a bit of a higher. But let's say Derby, Bonsley and Birmingham City. And potentially people going down here with Derby really having a shocker indeed. But let's get into our last game against Sunderland. Can we end up that high at the Stadium of Lights here? Jesus Christ, look at the overall of some of our players. Look at Devine, he's going by massively. He's obviously had a very good season indeed. Randall's got a red card, he's had a shocker. One of the players will be a bit dirty there. And we do, with Downs, getting the last goal. So we have officially done it, ladies and We have won the championship and are heading to the Premier League. Very nice indeed in three seasons. I mean, we're still in the Orange Bright, even though we did bits there. Let's have a look at the team. Oh, wow, Jesus Christ, I just got a glimpse there. Damien Downs with 31 goals. He has really come into his own. A goalkeeper doing has got to go. Right, fair enough. It's not gone to Cooper. It has gone to the whole city Cooper in Ricardo Ofori right there. Team of the tournament. I expect a lot of Plymouth Argo boys in here. A lot of Janners. Let's have a look here if it bloody reveals. And Downs in as we spot. Divine is in there. Gibson is in there. And I believe that is it. Oh, and Morgan Wicker. Of course, he's got to be in the bloody team of the tournament right there. All right, fair ado though, let's have a look at some of the other cup runs. So we've won the league, we know that for a fact. FA Cup, how have we done there? Villa versus Arsenal. Where the hell did we get knocked out here? So annoying, like you've got to just find this. It'd be nice if it just highlighted straight away. But let's have a look here. We've just got a little, little gander. And there it is, finally, after bloody fraction for about five or six minutes, we got knocked out to Crystal Palace right there. What about the Cabrera Cup? We didn't do too bad in these. Let's say Brentford beat Newcastle. Not too shy from them. And we got actually knocked out by the winners in... Brentford so fair play to them right there but now this is the interesting bit how many goals we have scored I mean we saw them with Damien Downs but let's have a look at the outstanding performance of the season going into the Premier League and Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. talk about stats indeed oh Jesus Christ Damien Downs with 33 goals out of 46 uh, six games there is absolutely ridiculous I mean same with Jackson Dickerson going to buy plus six as well 23 Plus sixes all around the park there. Morgan Wicker, of course, doing bits. And also Alfie Devine as well. He has gone up tremendously to 12 and a 17. We expected to do well this season. My God, we have done a bally moment with 16 assists and six as well. Ryan Hardy as well doing some distribution as a bit of a rotational. Same with Victor De Silva going up by plus three as well. New soon as Lewis Marley as well. He's had a decent one as well. Let's have a look at some other individuals. Obviously great, obviously in the DM room, but still picking up six assists. I'm very happy with that indeed. And now finally, let's have a look at some of the Yuva cannons we'll be loaned out. Henry Moss here, and I believe there is one more individual. I can't believe the name was one of the areas there. Harvey Johnson, we loaned them out in the end. Just after before I simulated, I went into being alone and accepted the first offer. So they have gone out there. He's frozen the 70 mark overall already. I think he had the potential to be special. So he's hitting potentially the high 90s in the near future if we get him to there. Victor De Silva. Very good, as per usual. Same with Terry Wright. He must have loaned out randomly throughout the season. I don't know how they but he's gone to Sheffield United. Fair enough. Let's have a look at Diego Corina. He's gone up by plus three. Carlos da Costa. Plus five. No, he's gone up by plus five. I expect him a little bit more there, to be honest with you. I can't believe speak, to be honest, because I, I just cannot believe we've actually gone on to win the league. I just said it as a bit of a hunch, but we actually have gone on to do it. So happy days indeed. But looking at the overall team, that was just a bit of a glance at like a full image of them. It's looking good, and I think we can survive the Premier League. We've got to avoid relegation, and that is the main priority right there. We've got nine inboxes right here. Let's have a little quick gander. There's torrent prize money, happy days indeed. And I think a lot of it is a lot of jury. Manager Ward right there. Let's have a look at player contract. Uh, Ethan Morris, he's ready to play. And Saxon early. I would offer you a new contract, my man, but the bloody game would not allow me to do it, which is very annoying indeed. You scout report, we've got, I believe, one guy in here, and that is Aaron Barnett. He's nearly 59. He's dropped down in potential from 94 to 93, but he's still got the 87, so he's definitely still got bow. that kid right there. Over the season three, there was an absolute storm, and we see a lot of progress, especially in their attack with Divine as well. I think he's got up the most, I believe. He's gone up by, like, I don't know, about seven or six ratings, so unbelievable from him. It's very good indeed. Maybe the next season, I'm happy with the overall team. 
but I believe it probably needs a little bit more oomph in the defensive row to just survive the likes of the Premier League of like Ivan Tony, Erlen Haaland, uh, Alex, I was going to say Alexis Sanchez, then what I'm thinking about. I have a special mirror trial right there, but I'm thinking of Gary Hayes from Arsenal. That's what I was thinking of there. But the likes of them strikers, we got to keep an eye out for them. And hence why I feel like we definitely need to improve the defensive row. So I'll see you guys in season four in the Premier League. So here we have it then. Season four is here and we have made history. We are in the Premier League from coming off from last season, winning the championship. As you can see from the team and in the top left corner, we're near the red bar. It's because we have potentially lost two players. One already being out and he didn't want to sign a contract. So he has gone. And also our right winger here in Archie Evans. If we can quickly find him. And so look quick. Gandhi has submitted a loan request. So we will have to let go of him right here because we cannot take it off. Which means we'll probably have to find a backup right winger. I also as well want to find a new centre back. I feel like now being in the Premier League. As you can see with the players we've got in the position. They're not very high rated. So we do need someone with a little bit more oomph to survive the Premier League. Before we continue on and show you how much budget we got for the season. Which is a very big amount. I will show you right there. Biggs Farming is a very rich man now with Plymouth Argo. As you can see Alfie Devine here has gone to potentially be special. Also on a fantastic season. They're seeing the potential in the game now. So he could be an absolute worldly indeed. We've also got Jackson Dickinson as well going to potentially be special as well. So we're pretty much short in the Cam and ST row. All eyes on will be our main man, Damien Downs, this season. How he gets on in the Premier League. Big step for him. Obviously, last season was the top goal scorer, but this one, he needs to step up a little bit more. It's going to be a hard challenge for him. But I feel like the rest of the team is pretty much okay. We just need to work on the defensive row. However, well, it's time to reveal how much budget we got though. And it is a whopping 66 million. Yes, you heard it. 66 million for Ian Foster and I to make some transfers for Plymouth Fargo in season four. Although before we do sign any players, we need to have a look at the objectives from Big Simon above. And as you can see, Youth Van Rijen is a critical priority once again for Plymouth Fargo. However, it does say one of three. So we'll just quickly review who that is quickly right now. It is Barry, the guy from our youth development. We brought him in for this season, but I will be learning him straight away because there's no way he's going to be fitting this team. And anyway, we have got Polly as our backup DM with Rando right there. However, though, with the youth academy this season, I'm just going to try and tick the boxes, ladies and gentlemen, and just send one scout out again back on the first month. I won't show you, I'll probably show you the end of the season because we do not want to get sacked and it is our main priority for this season. And the reason I'll say we won't want to borrow this season as, let's be honest, we're in the Premier League now. Season four, we've got our players that we want, like Dickerson. And also Morris. So I don't feel we want to invest it too much this time in the academy and actually try and upgrade the team with some actual signings and loans. Looking at the rest of the objectives now, though, you can see Brian's to sign one crucial first team player signed to the midfield position. We could definitely do it with the budget we've got this season. Financially, win the same season, sign two crucial players and make a profit at 29.5. Pretty much million. That's, that's fine. Domestic success, avoid relegation, which is pretty obvious. Reach the round of 16 of the FA Cup. And also Continental, as a shock, is no objective. We might not have European football this season, but I reckon we will with this guy, with Antonio Silva. An absolute unit, one of the hottest prospects in the Portuguese centre-back division right here. He needs Premier League football, so why not Plymouth Argo, a newly promoted team? It'd be a challenge for him, and it's a massive upgrade. We paid him whopping £53 million for this man, so it's a big price tag. The question is, with a budget dropping this low now because of this signing, are we going to get anyone else? And the last sign of show is actually going to be a free agent, which is, to me, going to be a fantastic find here in Pablo for Nows. I'm going to see if he has a rotation, but if he wants crucial rotation with Mumba and Wicker, it'll be fine. But he has accepted a rotation rule, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I want him on for three years. I feel like he's still got something to give. I mean, he's in his prime, considering he is a free agent. But the one thing I'm a bit worried about is his wage. I'm going to go 40. I think that's a nice player for him in terms of wage and they have accepted it hopefully that don't mess me up too much but that is going to be the final signing of season four ladies and gentlemen now let's go have a look at the monthly scouts and see what they have brought back and now it's finally time to see who they have brought back so let's have a little gander right as you can see i've just quickly high low was similar to the first game as you can see we've got a couple here right here so let's sign these two right here let's have a look Islo Jimenez as well I mean nearly the mill mop I'm just going to leave the rest go on to Availers here I'm looking at the British people here Sam Gale doesn't look too bad William Hood and also not too bad and the rest are pretty much stinkers let's see if we can sign these right there we've done it here the youth development which is very nice from Plymouth Argo but we want to bring them in why the hell not we might see if we can load some out when we get to the end of the season which are real Reveal and see how they have got on. But let's have a look and see if anyone has got a bit of outstanding. So Israel Jimenez, the Spaniard there in the 17-year-old Cam. He doesn't look too shabby, so we're going to bring him in as well. 
And also Sam Gale doesn't look too bad as well. The rest of them are also a bit younger in age. So we'll have to wait for, for now. Which do we want to go for here? Let's have a look at some of their stats and see how they kind of are. I feel like this guy's a bit more of a winger in terms of his dribbling and pace. So we're going to convert him into probably, I would say, more of a left mid. Let's go left mid with there on William Hood and Mariano Acosta. What are you, my friend? I mean, what are you indeed? You've got good dribbling again. I think it's got to be a winger. Again, oh, maybe actually, maybe not actually. Maybe he's, he's saying no. But he is saying left wing. Right wing's that, but left wing is too weak. So maybe he wants to play left wing. Who knows with Mariano Acosta right there. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is pretty much the team ready for season four in the newly promoted Premier League. The question is, though, how will they do? I will see you at the end of the season. So here we are at the end of the season. We've beaten Newcastle. We've beat Fulham 3-1. We've beaten Crystal Palace 2-1. Hang on a minute. I mean, we're in the top left-hand corner in the orange, but... We lost to Chelsea there. We beat Newcastle 3-0. Fulham 3-1 as well. And then Crystal Palace for our last game against Bournemouth. I mean, hopefully we have survived relegation. Who knows indeed. Let's go check it out right here. Let's see what happens right there on the standings. How have we done that then? How'd you fluke that one? How the hell have we done this then? I mean, Plymouth Fargo, our objective for Big Solomon was to well, avoid relegation. And somehow we have beaten the likes of Liverpool, Manchester United, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal. All the way to the Champions League spot with Manchester City, Spurs and Villa getting it. How the hell have we done that? Our objective was to avoid bloody relegation. And we've got into pretty much the top three. Well, potentially anyway, if we beat Bournemouth here today. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. Surely a lot of our players have gone up and overall... My God, they have. Look at Downs, 84 now. It's ridiculous. Morgan Wick hasn't really jumped up, though. Maybe a peak injury there, but Gibson has got a record on the bottom left corner. Warm mag right there against Bournemouth. Can we end on a high and we end on a loss? Which I do believe we have come, well, maybe potentially fourth if Villa lost right there. Let's have a little gander. I didn't get to see a little glimpse of it. Let's have a look at the finish of the table. And we have, we've got Champions League football. Liverpool did finish on the same points, but our goal difference after they smacked them out the ass by another 22 goals. That is ridiculous. The so next season, we've got Champions League football. How else do we get in the other cuts? Because if we've come fourth in the league coming up from the, well, the championship, we must have known the cups here. But West Ham to Manchester United. We got to the semi finals in the FA Cup. What the bloody hell is going on here? Beat Aston Villa 4-1. Well, oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, and then we lost to West Ham 3-2. Cabello Cup. Have we won this? No. No, we have definitely have not won that right there. Where do we get knocked out here? Let's have a little quick gander. never plays fine. He's really quick, can you? We lost to Arsenal, which is fair enough. They're our top six side indeed. Let's go check out the actual players of the season though. I'm very intrigued for this, by the way. This is absolutely ridiculous. Who are the outstanding players? I reckon there's definitely going to be one in Damien Downs. And my God, it has is 42 goals. There's me saying he might struggle in the Premier League this season. But he's actually taking it by storm. Dickerson as well. I mean, he's been brilliant. 18 and 11 in the Premier League. Elfie Devine as well. 13 11, you expect there was some cam in the especially in the Premier League. But this man right here, he could get player of the season. 32 out of 37 is ridiculous as well. The FA Cup, he got more goals than the appearances. I mean, the same with the Cabrero Cup. Mon Wicker didn't have the best season. Normally he is up there with the statistics of goals, but maybe picked up an injury halfway through. Who knows? Only because he played way less games than the majority of the rest of the actual normal stars. Ethan Morris has gone up by 76. He's got four goals in centre back as 76 overall centre back is pretty decent. Lewis Marley with 7 assists as well. Archie Gray with 14 assists. Wow, that is a bit weird. I mean, considering Lewis Marley had more last season, let's say the DM has got more this season, which is a bit of a strange one. Randall's getting some game time. Let's say 4 now has only picked up the one guy at 17, which is absolutely fine. And now lastly, let's have a look at our backups here with the people that we loaned out. Aaron Barnett here, 64 overall, not too shy. Israel Jimenez, Sam Gale, okay. Tyre Wright, he should be back this season. No, next season, I do believe. And it looks like that's pretty much it with only Harvey Johnston as well. He can actually make it over the team if you still got the potential to be special, but you never know. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. I don't know what to really say. I really didn't expect that at all. That is probably one in a million chances that's going to happen. Let's have a look at the transfer market. It looks like Moss has been sold to Strun Graz there. Gail to Rodriguez, and the list goes on. And we also as well sold at Plegazelo because, like I said, with the amount of centre-backs we had, he had to go, so it looks like he has gone to La Palma's in the Spanish division. But what a season we have just had right there. That is absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to say next season, I mean, with this team continue to grow up in overall, who knows? And with the money we'll get as well, we'll probably get about 80, 90 million now. A couple of more signings. 
we could do the treble i'm honestly debating that right now because we just keep surprising every season with the championship and now getting in pretty much the top four in the premier league is ridiculous within only our fourth season with plymouth argo the janners are doing absolutely fantastic what a season we've just had there and what a season it was was us leading into season five now and i'm just gonna bloody say it i think we can actually go for the full lot considering we came fourth in our first season in the premier league fourth position is ridiculous for plymouth Fargo. we didn't do too bad in the fa cup as well just getting knocked out in the semis to lead on to the final but it is what it is i'm just looking at the team now and just thinking where can we improve to maybe push for the actual league or maybe get into the top three or top four once again. And I'm thinking again in the centre-back rows. And also maybe over my league. Because I'll show you now. Gray will grow up naturally. Because I think he's got the excellent prospect right here. But if you look at Lewis and Miley. He's only got short great potential. It's only 21 at 81 euros. So I don't know if I can offer him a rotational rope boat. Or maybe go for a swap deal for getting someone a little bit bigger. However though we are going to get some big players in this season. Because our budget this season is our 110 million. For getting the top four we can really get some big boy players in Plymouth Argyle. But once again though the objectives for this season is the crucial on the youth academy. So like I said we're in our fifth season now. We're not going to deep dive into it too much. So it says here to sign three players in the youth academy. Sign the defending position and obviously the younger 20 position. Would be uh, great overall than the average rating of the current players in their position in the short term so not too bad there we'll get that one done but we'll show that at the end of the season we'll just sign someone so we can just get the ticks so we don't get bloody sacked it'd be nice if you could disable the youth academy objectives or any other objectives in the next fifa or ea whatever you want to bloody refer it to but it is what it is it's very frustrating indeed Sign one crucial first team player signed to the midfield position we could potentially do that with lewis money swap deal with someone that i will reveal very soon i feel like we're a brilliant fit for plymouth argo Financially, absolutely fine. Domestic success. So they obviously don't want us to pretty much finish in the top four. That was just a one-off. But you never know. But the team growing now is proving me wrong. Time and time again. Same with like Damian Downs getting the goals. But they want us to finish mid-table and reach the round of 16th stage in the FA Cup. And Continental, they want us to reach the quarter finals. Considering they want us to finish mid-table with Premier League, but want us to reach the quarter finals against the best teams in the world. It's a bit of a stretch, so we'll have to see what we do with Plymouth Fargo throughout the season. So I said I had someone lined up, ladies and gentlemen, and you can just quickly see it right now. It is James Madison. He comes in to Plymouth Fargo. I think it'll be a perfect fit. We'll still have Avi Devine as our can, but this guy will be replacing Lewis Marley in the centre midfield, just behind Devine. Just giving that tiki tacker throughout the middle was great. Is in there just kind of playing like a Rodri role, just doing it all in bloody self. So that is why James Manson comes in. We swapped him with Lewis Money, which is a big loss. He wasn't here long, but we need to upgrade if we want to go for the biggest trophies. Our new number seven comes in with a Lewis Barley swap deal and 35 million on tops. The question is, though, we need to get a defender, and I've got just the man to get in for Plymouth Fargo. And that player I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, in the defensive role is Leeway Cole. We're not from Chelsea, from Nice, but we're going to return him back to the Premier League, but with the outstanding team of the Janners in Plymouth Fargo. He'll be making his debuts very soon at Home Park. 84 in the left-back role, but we are going to convert back into the centre-back because I feel like that is where he naturally is, and I feel like his stats will skyrocket if we actually convert him to his more natural position. And absolutely brick shit territory. We still have got a lot of players in the team, especially in the centre-back role. No one has been swapped out of this deal. So we're going to have to talk to some people and negotiate their contracts to rotation because this man is definitely going to be a crucial player for season five for Plymouth Fargo. Welcome, Levi Kirwill. So let's say we have set out two scouts in the defence one, one in England, one in Wales. But as you can see, we're going to have a little quick gander right here so we can tick off the objectives. We've still got a couple of them in at the youth academy already, but they're not in the defensive row. No one really there though, very poorly indeed. Jonathan Clark doesn't look too bad, so we'll bring him in. And I'm going to actually quickly go back to this scout to see if there's anyone that has got a little bit about him. I don't think they really have. What about this Harvey Phillips? Not, not really. Mm, not the best. I mean, this guy has got about 300 good market value, so I think we'll try and bring him in. So let's have a little gander, shall we? Have some of these individuals. Let's have a look. We could probably loan some of them out because they, they will get pretty much upset because they won't get much gain to now considering we're in the fifth season. So let's have a look here. So we've got a couple of them right here. So I feel like we're just going to do every single one of these. So hopefully a lot of that. I mean, this guy, like Ellis Saunders, looks actually quite good, to be honest. 86 and 92. Doesn't look too shabby. Does not look too shabby indeed. But that's going to help it a little bit in the top left-hand corner. It's not going to start. And there you go. Youth development. They're very satisfied. Let's have a look at some of these youngsters as well before we pretty much see it to the end of the season. Ellis Saunders. All right, we're going to definitely loan you out. 
Morris Acosta, Ooh, you're not too bad. We're just going to learn him out. I'm a nice manager. I'm a nice manager. On it, Barnett has definitely grown down in potential, really. I think he has shown great potential, but now he's gone to show, well, great potential. You know what I mean? Potentially special. That's what I was trying to refer to right there. So, you can just definitely get set alone. Sam Gale, not really hitting for my man, so I'm probably going to sell you, my man. The Costa will keep you there. Polly is just there to just, well, sit on the bench, to be honest. Ryan Holly from day one, I don't want him to leave, so hopefully he will stay. And I think the rest of the team, to be honest, is doing absolutely fine. We're hoping Lewis gives him one. We're getting too angry now that Lewis Colwell has come into the team. Just going to quickly confirm as well. We're going to actually try and change him into a centre back. You can see it there, he can do. So he, there you go, two weeks. And hopefully his overall will actually skyrocket to absolutely massive. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. No one really sold this season so far. Well, do we out the season, we will. But at this present moment, we will not now. The question is, though, how will this team go on to the end of the season? Will they do absolutely madness? Maybe potentially go on to win the Premier League or get top four once again? That'd be the goal. Let's see how it changes. And let's see how this team plays out. So here we are at the end of the season's arrived. 4-3 would be in Real Madrid, but we lost to Newcastle too. How do we lose that? I mean, I don't know how there, but we'd be in Chelsea. Hang on, there could be still light here. It looks like we've got a Champions League final and an FA Cup one as well against Manchester City. We've got in the final Milan. That's going to be a very wild final indeed. Let's have a look at the league table though. This looks tight. And it is, it's against Plymouth Fargo versus Man United. Whoever wins this game goes on to win the Premier League. We just need a draw, really, because our goal difference is highest as well. It's going to be an absolutely nussy game, this indeed. Let's just jump into it straight away here. And let's see what the crack is right here. So here we go. Can we do it? And we do with Dickerson right at the end in the 76th minute. Oh, no! Secures one of three trophies. For Plymouth, Argo, Mason Greenwood, rat, playing back to Man United. I just have to say, we won't explain why. But if you've been following the news, you definitely know why I'm there. But we won't in this video right here. We're keeping it bloody PG. But Emirates FA Cup against Man City. This is the one that always gets away from us. It does indeed. Let's just simulate it up to it really quick and see if we can get two out of three. I'm not fussed if we don't win this because I feel like the team we've got now, we've left it in a good composition with us. It would be Brentford right there. But let's jump right into this. Can Erlen Haaland... I mean, they haven't got... A, I was going to say I've got a strong team, but then I've seen Pedri, I've seen Casemiro in centre-back. I mean, the rattiness there from Man United to go into Manchester City is very strange. But our team is looking deadly. Can we do it? Can we get to a free? And we can. Rodrigo, Boyoko, and also Phil Foden. So, it's not going to be the treble, lads, to potentially finish off this challenge here today. But I'm leaving that on a high. I feel like I can leave Ian Foster... To maybe win the FA Cup in the 6th to 7th if we do not win the Champions League. If we win it, obviously the challenge is completed and I will be leaving my services at Plymouth Argo. However though, let's have a look at the player stats for the season. Let's have a gander. So there is an Olympic Stadion, Stadium, I believe I pronounce it. Milan versus Plymouth Argo in the Champions League final. But let's have a look at the squad a bit. Let's see uh, the outstanding players for this season so far. I mean, look at Jesus Christ. Here we go again. Damian Downs, 23 years old. The United States gone up by a plus six as well. 90 overall. This could be one of the best strikers we've ever had. In, I'm going to say in all the career modes, even off YouTube, ever. He is ridiculous. I mean, 42 goals. Um, yeah, I, what would he start off with his overall? Was it like a 64 or a 67? And he's gone all the way up to 90 within just five seasons. It's ridiculous. Jackson Dixon here, the uh, potentially special striker. So he still is there. We expect that. Morgan Wicker having a very good season as well. 21 goals, definitely better in the season the last season. Alfred Devine got up by plus six as well. Obviously, he had a potential to be special one rate as well. 18 and 18 is ridiculous. Bally Mumba as well. James Manison was a decent son in the end. Ryan Hardy getting 12 goals in the Premier League. Well, in all competitions, sorry. Very good. And we roll round as well. It looks like Ethan Morrison, the Welsh centre back, with only the uh, show great potential. He's doing really well. Getting five and four as a centre back well, is decent. Archie Gray not really getting many assists. And Adam Rando as well. A 75 overall is also getting a success. The Plymouth younger boy right there. I can see that we have changed Levi Colwood to a centre back. Which means he has gone up by plus two or three I believe. Hence why he is the 87 right there. But now ladies and gentlemen it's time to see if we complete this challenge today. Against the mighty AC Milan. So here is their lineups here today. I mean it's a very good team. But they have got like, a Yuva County player in Abru up top. Mintal, I'm not too sure there's, But they have got one individual. The Portuguese one in Rafael Leal. He is probably like 91-92. Conor Gallagher, Granbush, Benesher in the middle. Decent midfield. Tomori, John Stills, Mainan, Gusto and 
Tory. I don't know who the Tory is, but fair enough indeed. But looking at our team, it, it is looking stacked. Madsen has got the yellow little badge there upside his name because he is playing centre mid and he's normally a camp. But I feel like it's like, I think it's like 40 weeks left to remain to be to change into a centre mid. So he's just going to do that really today. But however, can Morgan Whitaker lead Plymouth Fargo to lift the Champions League title? He's already lifted the Premier League. Missed out on the FA Cup, but can he do it here today? I will reveal as well if we have done the Capella Cup. I just forgot to do that, ladies and gentlemen, but we will reveal that to there. So there could actually still be a treble on the hands here, but we'll reveal that straight after. But let's focus on the Champions League final. Can we do it? Let's get into this. So here we have it then. It's AC Milan, one of the kings and one of the biggest teams to always win the Champions League. I think they've won it numerous, numerous times with the likes of Maldini. Kaka back in the day, R9, I believe. Well, I don't know how I played for AC Milan. I believe he did for a little short period of time. Not too sure, correct me if I'm wrong. I know he played for Inter. But can Plymouth Fargo lift it in the first club history? We changed the kits to the green and go because that was the kits we won into League 1 there. But we're now into the Championship. We're wearing these to represent that we are champions and we could be champions here with Ian Foster and Marcel in Season 5. Benesha had gone for the long shot there. Very audacious from the the Algerian there, Albanian, I believe, DM. But he pits it over the ball. Ian Foster, look a bit worried so far. It should be absolutely fine. Cooper, one of our very own. It's nice to see we've still got a couple of players from the get-go that are still in this team. Like Bally Mumba, like Morgan Whitaker, like Cooper. And some also youth academies of players as well. Here is Bally Mumba on the ball now. Can we find that the Bally Mumba that was absolutely ripping it up in League One? Not doing much in Champions League these days. But in this career mode, he is turning to one of the best stars in world football. Unlucky there, though. Conor Gallagher swings the ball over to this Minta. Minta, Luke Colbert does really bad to defend against him now. Could be worked inside. Good ball to the box, and Antonio Silva gets his lines out. But Levo Kowu draws a foul in the box, and it will be a AC Milan penalty. Let's have a look at this here. We'd lunged him right at the end. And it's just a high leg. It's just clipped him right there, and it looks like it will be a penny to AC Milan. It's number nine. It's the youth account player against Cooper. What can Cooper do? Can he pull off a save in the Champions League final? He can. That's my keeper. He might have come out from an injury, but he's back in ever in real life. It's a fantastic save. Dickerson now plays in the more Wicker. This is what Argo's good at. Counter attack, and I've ruined it. I've rushed it with Bally Mumbo and Morgan Wicker. But a crucial save from Cooper. So it looks like the favourites and AC Milan are absolutely dominant Plymouth Fargo at the moment. But Antonio Silva there picked it out for a throw in. Number 27, that should be yours there. Quite the front's nice. Madison, terrible touch from Madison, but he wins it back to number 7. It still falls to AC Milan's possession. Conor Gallagher. There should be able to know and defend against him. He plays for probably England this game now. Ooh. A lot of tiki tackle going on here. We cannot get the DM, unfortunately. But better share with the shot. Madison, oh, we cannot get the ball out here. We've just got to get it out. Good save from Cooper once again. 32 minutes in now. And Plymouth Fargo, the underdogs. You can see why they're the underdogs, because they are really struggling. But we can see here. What a save from Cooper this is. Gets down. Pings it off with his left hand. And I'll tell you what. That boy is keeping us in the game. Number 10. Swings it in. Rafael Leal. Can Morris get up there? He can and now can we get a chance here with Antonio Silva on the ball here? Oh, it's going to play the ball through, but we need some probably better runners. No one's going to run up there. Bally Mumba, get the switch off to Morgan Whitaker. Plymouth Fogel's best player in real life by Country Mole. Nice. Archie Gray. He's going to play it defensively here. Yeah? That's a well from Madison. That's what we brought him in there for. Antonio Silva into Bally Mumba. In Bally Mumba. Try and do some skill here. Oh, we can't get past Kustel. Unfortunate right there. But still, nil-nil, potentially going to the second half. A terrible clearance there, but Morris gets up for it. Archie May into Devine. Does one. Devine doing two. Potentially goes to Madison. Madison going for the shot now, but it's falling off. Oh, but my now, good save. I thought it fell to Alvi Devine there, but it just didn't in the end. Unfortunate there. And it looks like it could go to half time here. Nil-nil, and it will. Plymouth Vogel holding up a little hope there at the end there, the last 10 to 20 minutes. It looks like we've finally woken up there. But AC Milan, the majority of the game, have been dominant. And we just got to get over there. I don't know why I've got a score update there of Crystal Palace. That's very strange. That's a first. Fair enough. But Neil no at the break. I'll let you know if myself and Ian Foster make any changes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, only one change for myself. And that's the nearest signing in. James Madison goes off for one of our own. Ran Rando. He comes on the pitch in the centre mid of the number 75. 
Well, Ray in 75 had uh, prepped myself there. Morgan Wicker, looking against Baz. Oh, that's a dirty challenge there. And I think that will be, maybe not a yellow card. I don't know why the ref has stopped the play there. Left a massive gap to exploit with Wicker, but fair enough. Morris on the ball to Randall. What can he do? He's just caught on the pitch here. Finds Alfred Devine. Can he get the ball into the box there? It's going over to Downs. We can't get over. It's been quiet this game, Downs. Our highest rate player, our best player in this career mode, has not been really doing anything. But Adam Randall there. Going against Ralph Ferriau. Unreal. Gets the ball back. Gets it to Morgan Wicker. Back to Randall. Randall, good turn there. Can we get Bally Mum to potentially make the run? He does make the run. Bally Mum, swing to the pot there. Oh, I thought it was going back post. And we couldn't get it. It is coming for Plymouth Argo. It is. But we've just got to keep going here. Just don't let that play go through. Oh, that's unlucky. And now the ball goes through. And now it's Ryan grabbing Birch. Can we get the ball off? It's a good shot. Goal and keeper has to grab the ball. Come on, boys. Got to get someone here. Down to make the run. That's it. Finally get involved in the game, my man. Does kind of, but loses the ball quite poorly. That's it. Just play a bit safer. No need to rush. Great. Great ball over to Bally Mumba. And it's a great little dummy there from Bally Mumba. That is what he used to do in League One, ladies and gentlemen. Can he play it back? He can. To Downs. Can he play it over to... Oh, can't do it. Jacobson, not the best pass there. Sadly minutes in. Still nil-nil. A very stalemated final indeed, but you can just tell there's something going to happen in this game. Is it going to fall to the boys in green or the boys in red? Plays over there to Rafael Leal. He goes for the finish shot there. Great save from Cooper. Go Will Ward. Terrible clearance. And Tony Silva recovers well from them. Jesus, man, that was risky. Randall plays over the team in real life in Morgan Waker. What can he do from this angle? Gets snapped a little bit there. This is not a good chance, this. And Tony Silva, absolute brick shit house. I love it, but Rafael Lou still keeps this game alive. It's a ball into the box. There's a free header. Oh, it's gone in. No! And it's Abru. AC Milan have taken the goal in the 80th minute over a bit of sloppy defence. It's a great ball into the box. But unfortunately, AC Milan, one of the best teams ever in football. A 1 0 up in the Champs League final. Late on, very horrible that for Plymouth Fargo, but even Morris had to cover two players there. And it unfortunately goes in the net of Plymouth Fargo. Got to come back now. Substitution here for AC Milan. But what is Plymouth Fargo going to do here? I think we've got to go to attack here. We have to. We have to go to attack here. Downs goes it into Bally Mumba. Bally Mumba, what can he do from here? 1 2 action straight away here. More workers on the post. Can Wicker get up for it? He can't. Oh, I thought we could have got some in there. Still alive, though. Downs into Mumba. Inside to Downs. It's a great turn from Downs to the post. Oh, you can't believe it. You can't write it. It's still alive, though. Morgan Wicker. Oh, come on. Got to be something in this game. Goes to Mumba. Mumba! Oh. And it's Bally Mumba. He did it against it, which a couple of years are back to make it 1-0 at the end. And he's done it in the Champions League final. Plymouth Fogo love a late-minute goal. And we bloody got one. With Bally Mumba. The fans be singing the tequila song now. But number two, he found a gap. He didn't give up. The fans are going ballistic. We're back in this Champions League final. Come on, we didn't give up. So what a Champions League final we got. An absolute slow, stalemated game. But we went ultra attack, we had a bit of desire there. And we've done it. Just blow the whistle, get to extra time, and we have. What a final so far. It's been so stalemate, it's so boring pretty much into the 80th minute. And it's just the game just took a light. Rafael having a fantastic game here, assist. But that man right there, Bally Mumba, the desire from everyone. We gotta look on the post. Can we brought back with Mumba? Come on. So they're showing two substitutions. Ryan Hardy comes on for Dickerson and Morris goes off for Gibson in the centre back row. Just a bit of fresh legs and top and in defence. What started from Gibson, but he can't get it off Conor Gallagher. There's an open man on that wing. We've got to be careful. And it's all okay. It's all good. Ryan Hardy, 71 overall. Big debut and a big chance this for the Champions League final. He could do it. You never know. Benacer. Milan just gone a bit slow with their player, but Conor Gallagher just well, we should be getting that there. And it's a terrible header there. And I'll tell you what, we could be through here with Morgan Whitaker. Whitaker's going to run all the way through. Ryan Hardy is beside him. And Ryan Hardy gets the goal in the Champions League final. What the hell happened there? 
with that header back there from AC Milan. And Ryan Hardy, you have been Hardy to AC Milan. It is 2-1 in the Champions League final. I'm not that enthusiastic on this one because I didn't know what happened there with the Milan defence. They absolutely disappeared. And Morgan Wicker's pace is second to none. We had two or three options with Ballymum and Hardy. And he picks up the goal today. And we are leading this Champions League final. Can we get this challenge completed? So Bally Mumba and Ryan Hardy, one in the 90th, one in the 100th minute. We just got to see this game out though. The fans are going ballistic. One more goal. That's a terrible, what is wrong with their midfield? They're absolutely panicked at the back. And Dan's going to run through, but oh, Jesus Christ. Let's, let's not take the piss here. Well, that shot was so bad, it went out for a throw in. A bit of an Emil Heskey meme right there, but fair enough. Is that Bradley there? Is that Connor Bradley? I don't know if that's... Well, I don't know if too sure if I've... Uh, that's his first name. I'm not too sure. The Liverpool fullback had a very good one in real life recently. But it is 2-1. I don't know what to say. I mean, where did that goal come from? Shell shock from everyone watching at home. But we are leading this Champions League final. Happy days. Right, there are no changes going into this... Well, the second extra half time here. Don't really need to. I think we just got to see this off though. I feel like this is going to be a miracle and I don't think we're going to maybe potentially achieve this again how lucky we've been in this final. So I feel we just need to pretty much start the bus. Archie Gray there does really well. The former man from Aston Villa. Alfred Devine, former man from Spurs does well in Port Vale. Goes to Gibson. Could be born the back post there. It's not the best cross though. Let's keep it up down. Kowo, just don't let this man get through. Keepers already denied him once. And do not give him a second chance because it's got to be someone about him if he's in the Champions League final. Well, from Gibson there does really well. He's been a really impactful sub since we brought him on, which is very good to see. Colwell plays it over there to Alfie Gray. He just gets snapped. We will take that. Just reels I'm still on bloody ultra attack. Get that back down to the 3 5 2 instantly right now. I mean, it worked though. My stupidity of Rios is still not on on the one all. We've scored from it, so maybe that's why. We actually got the goal from it. Gibson there gives it in to Randall. Can he find it through to Downs? Downs is through here. Can Downs finish the game? And he can. It is America's dream here for Downs. Number 13. And I think that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. We have done it. He had to score in the Champions League final. The man with the dreads. We didn't change his number. We did want to get rid of his Ryan Hardy's number, number nine. So we kept it the classic 13. We could have swear it. But he's a greedy bastard. He loves the goals. We've all seen it. And he's got his goal in the Champions League. A nice tidy finesse past my nan. And we have done it, I think. And there it is, ladies and We have done it. It took us an extra half time to get the result today. But what a Champions League final. And it was all down to really Bally Mumma to carry us on into the extra time. As you can see, in the 90th, the 100th, and the 120th minute, we got our goals. With Avru getting the goal with the 80th, we thought. AC Milan was going to go on to win it. It took us five seasons. I was home for six or seven. But concerned how well we've done coming into the Premier League. And our first season coming fourth. And then the second season in the Premier League. We won the league. Absolutely ridiculous. Insane from the team. The Premier League winners. The Champions League winners. However, are we the Carabao Cup winners? We'll have to reveal that after this one. Because I completely forgot. Typical me. I'm a shocker. But there is the Champions League title with the green and white stripes. Morgan Wicker, the new captain for Plymouth Argo in real life under Ian Foster, will lift a number 10. Hopefully we'll stay in there for a very long time, but I think he probably will leave in the summer, Morgan Wicker. But for now, in this career move, within five seasons under Ian Foster, he does lift the Champions League title to confirm that this challenge today, ladies and gentlemen, has been complete. We have rebuilded Plymouth Argo with Ian Foster, the most open assistant manager, within five seasons. Happy days. Let's continue on. So there it is there. 3-1 against AC Milan, the Champions League final. We've beaten Real Madrid 4-3 on aggregate. We've been into 6-5 on aggregate. So that's all I mean. We're getting quite lucky. We're actually doing a bit of a comeback Kings. And whoever sees Argo in real life, we're really good at making comebacks. Especially scoring late on against Barcelona as well. What the bloody hell is going on here? Fair enough indeed. Absolutely ridiculous. Let's have a look at the Capero Cup though. Have we gone on to actually win this as well and confirmed a treble? So we've won the Premier League. We've won the Champions League. However, the Cabrera Cup, have we done it? <laughs> we have done it. Of course, we've bloody done it against Spurs, which is quite ironic because they always bloody bottle trophies. So we have technically done a treble. We missed out on the FA Cup, but like I said, we're probably going to leave that in the hands with Ian Foster's own. I'm going to part my ways to rebuild another team in the near future because Manchester City, the bastards, have ruined us the quad. 
quadruple. So very nice indeed. We'll have a little quick run down the team once again, but only like a really short minute one. Let's have a look at some of the youth academy players here. Marco Acosta has gone up by plus five. Elliot Sanders, who I thought looked quite good, has gone to a slash Rusquow. I don't know. How, um, I don't know why I'm trying to pronounce that name, but Aaron Bannett there's gone up quite a bit from host. So he looks like quite a decent player, to be fair. Israel Jimenez doing right. Two right right. We did say he was going to get rid of season one, but he's still bloody here. So fair enough. He's collecting some free mills, kind of like Calvin Phillips did with Manchester City. Not, no offense right there. Costa Costa there. Decent. Polly, decent. Ryan Hardy, unbelievable. One of the best players for Plymouth Fargo. Still in this bloody team. I'll tell you what, he's had a good one. Cabrero Cup, Champions League. He's had a very good season indeed. So, it's nice to see as well a couple of players returning back from loan, like Harvey Johnson, I do believe. If I just quickly may potentially offer him a contract here, he has got the potential to be special still. So, he's probably someone who would continue on with this criminal rebuild. Would probably take over even Morris because he's only got showgirl potential, but he's been decent. Had a very good season indeed with five and four. So, we'll say right there, Morgan, well, Michael Cooper, sorry, what's him? Morgan. Michael Cooper could get rid of him. He is beloved from Plymouth Fargo fans. He has to stay. But very well done indeed to the team. I really didn't expect it to get us done in the 15, especially getting to the Premier League. Normally, it takes quite a while from a team to the Championship to get to the Premier League, depending on your team, to get to the kind of stages. But we've done it within two seasons, which is absolutely fantastic. That is the proper Plymouth Fargo right there indeed. To finish off this episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to look at my career stats. Our biggest win, 6-1 against Chelsea fair enough but our biggest loss against Millwall right there in 2023 a record signing fee of 53 million which I think might have been for Antonio Silva correct me if I'm wrong 264 play games 153 wins 42 draws and 69 losses and for me I'm going to just quickly do this as well because it's a bit of fun here I feel like the most outstanding players for me is Damien Downs he was ridiculous team of the year nominee right there Alfie Devine and if I had to pick probably someone else, I would probably have to go with Morgan Whitaker because throughout the season at the very start, he was just scoring goals after goals and there was a lot of other players in the team who weren't really doing anything and he was carrying us with the goals and assists he produced every single game. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There is the final team. The challenge has been completed. If you'd like to see another special, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.